Who is the host? Is uh, Amit Amit Kumar? You are somehow assigned the host. So, can you can you make me the host? Yes. Rajesh? Rajesh? Um, okay. Can you, can you all hear me? Yes. Okay. Rajesh, you are, you are also a co-host. Um, yes. Do you want me to make someone else a co-host? No. No. Okay. Just you and me are there today, yeah? Yes. Okay. So, so we'll we'll wait till eleven thirty to start. Yeah. Some people may join at eleven thirty. Just see if uh, writing etc. works properly. Seems to be working.
Okay, so maybe maybe we can start now. Yeah, is that okay, Rajesh? Maybe it's gone. So anyway, we'll we will start now. It's time. Yeah. So Okay, so uh, so last time um, maybe I can switch off the video. So last time uh, we saw uh, some basic definitions. So we saw the definition of representation, and uh, um, so some of this. Yeah. It was working all fine, and suddenly we have an issue. Can you still share this? Uh, see the screen? Maybe not. Yeah. Yes, not right. Yeah, I see. It's, uh, it stopped. Uh, ah, okay. The program stopped. Uh, it, it has restarted the one note program, one note program. Okay, let me just try to share again. Can you see now? Yes. Sir. Okay. Yeah, and I can write. So hopefully it will go okay. Okay. It's freezing. Uh, I some problem with one note. Or maybe if I share, so I, when I work on it, uh, it doesn't create a problem, but okay, let's see. Hopefully no more issues. Okay. Yeah. So last time, last time we saw definition of representation. Uh, so that's basically a so a, a action. So if you have a group G and a vector space V, then it's an action of a action of a group on the vector space such that the action is linear. Yeah. The, uh, um, it's uh, so it's a, it's an action on a vector space. So we can ask the map these uh, these automorphisms or the bijection to be a linear map. Or in other words, it's a it's a group homomorphism from G to G uh, uh, GLB. Yeah, general linear maps of uh, our, our invertible transform uh, linear transformations of. So there are many ways of thinking about it, and then we. We saw that uh, uh, any so we, we are working over characteristic zero. So and today we will work over complex numbers. So in that setup, we saw that uh, in given a uh, given a representation and a sub representation, we can find a complementary dimensional representation. And uh, then uh, using that, uh, we showed that every representation is a direct sum of irreducible representation. Uh, so by irreducible representation means that it doesn't have any non-trivial sub-representation. It has uh, the only sub-representation it has is the whole representation and the zero, you know, zero subspace. Yeah. So these are the things we, we roughly saw. And uh, we saw tensor product of two representations. We saw direct sum of two representations uh, and uh, so on. Yeah. So, so today we will start by discussing uh, uh, dual representation. So if V is a G representation, I hope you know what this V dual is. So these are K linear maps from, uh, so home VK is this collection of K linear maps from V to K, you know, where K is the base field. Uh, so K, K the base field. Over which uh, V is a vector space. Yeah. 
so uh, so in our case uh, k will be uh, c more or less yeah more, most <coughs> most of the time so uh, so uh, i hope you know this uh, dual is is also a vector space yeah so uh, so these linear maps you can add them and you can multiply by elements of k and you still get a k linear map from v to v to k so uh, so this is all v, v star is already a vector space we want to make it uh, so so uh, so v is a g representation so there is action of g on we want to give uh, give a induced action on v star yeah and make it make v star into a representation so what does that mean we want to uh, so given an element phi in v star we want to know what is g dot phi so given an element v phi in uh, v star and uh, let's say g in g we want to know um, uh, what is uh, what is g dot phi yeah uh, so which uh, which linear map from v to k we get as g dot phi so uh, and that is how we we want to define the induced uh, induced representation on this star so we want to figure out what is this uh, what should the, what is the right candidate for this yeah so one guiding principle so there are two ways to think about it one is that remember from v star to v we have a pairing yeah uh, if we are given a linear map and a vector we can evaluate it and uh, get a get an element of the field k yeah, so this is a linear map. So, uh, so what uh, we can ask is that uh, the action of G on V star should be such that, uh, uh, it, I mean, it, uh, um, this pairing is in, invariant under the G action. So remember G acts, uh, so, so we want to give action on V star such that if we, uh, if we use the G action and the given G action on V, the pairing, is, uh, uh, pairing remains the same. Yeah. So in other words, uh, uh, G dot phi, the definition of G dot phi should be such that G dot phi comma G dot V, the sparing. So G dot phi is another element of V star. G dot V is another element of V. The sparing should be same as phi, phi comma V, the original pair. Okay, so this, this could be one guiding principle. So that uh, this uh, this so that so actually uh, I mean if you don't have any so there are many ways to think about it yeah so one possible definition maybe one can think of so maybe I'll write it in red because I want to I I would erase this so what what is the candidate yeah so what, one possible candidate one could think of it is uh, you can take phi g g v yeah in g dot v. What happened? Huh? Phi g dot b. Yeah. So the uh, and uh, for 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 all g. So so maybe this this could be uh, one possible definition. But uh, we, as we will see, the uh, this definition is not uh, what we really want. Yeah. Uh, so uh, so you can see that uh, uh, this is also uh, if you define it this way, then phi. Uh, g dot phi is still a linear map yeah so if you because because g is a, uh, operation of g is a linear map so this is indeed a linear map but uh, but this is not the action which we want yeah? so let's uh, so 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 we won't define it this way we we will use this guiding principle and uh, try to use, uh, see what the definition is so we get something close to this yeah some slight yes yeah, yeah, I have just one question. This uh, pairing is uh, bilinear, map, is it? Yeah, it's yeah. just. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, this is this pairing is bilinear. And yeah. that is that is also clear. Yeah. So if you yeah check, yeah this uh, is clear. Yeah. yeah. So uh, so now let's just uh, see what happens. Yeah. So we want this. So what is uh, what do we want? We want this map g dot phi when acting on uh, on g dot v should be same as phi v. Yeah? So uh, you, uh, this this statement is equal. So maybe this statement is equivalent to this statement. Yeah. So this is what we want. And what does this imply? So uh, so so we we are trying to compute this g phi. Yeah. So so that tells you g phi of v. 
should be same as phi of g inverse v. So you just replace v by uh, uh, v by g inverse v. Yeah. So you replace v by g inverse v, then you will see that uh, uh, you'll get this identity. So this is the formula for the linear map. Yeah. So this is our formula for uh, for uh, g phi. So you can check that this is indeed a linear map, uh, g phi, because uh, you know if you take v1 and uh, v1 plus v2, then g g inverse dot v1 plus v2 is g inverse dot v1 plus g inverse, and then phi is linear. So the, so this is additive and BHL with scalar multiplication. So g phi is uh, is in uh, v star again. So uh, at uh, at least it's a it's a right candidate. Um, but we 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 have to check that it is an action, yeah. And and uh, it's a, uh, so G acts on uh, on V star. So we'll have to check that it's an action, and we also have to check that uh, this is linear, yeah. Meaning uh, the action is linear, yeah. So so let's just check that this is an action, and linearity is straightforward, yeah. So uh, so li linear means uh, if you have. Uh, uh, you know uh, g dot phi one plus uh, phi two, then uh, uh, that is same as g dot phi one plus g dot phi two. But that that follows from this formula straight away. Uh, so let's first just check that it is an action. So action means that uh, if we have h h g dot phi, that should be same as h dot g dot phi. Yeah. So let's just check whether that is true or not. So h g dot phi. Well, H and so H and G are in in the group, yeah. So maybe H, I should so let H G be in G and uh, V be in V and uh, phi is in uh, V star. So we want to verify verify that uh, this uh, this uh, G dot phi is indeed an action. So we look at H G dot phi and evaluate it at uh, an arbitrary element of the vector space V. Yeah, and that is same as uh, by definition phi of h g inverse dot v, and uh, but what is h g inverse? That is g inverse h inverse dot v. Yeah, but remember the action of g on v is uh, um, is, uh, is so the g acts on v. Yeah, so g inverse h inverse of v is same as uh, you know uh, for, uh, you can you can club this and then do it. Yeah. So, so, and uh, the formula G inverse uh, times uh, some vector, uh, uh, phi of G inverse times some vector is just G dot phi of H inverse V. Yeah, that, that was the formula. So you just replace in this, uh, in this formula, in this uh, right formula, you replace uh, V by H inverse of V, then you get, uh, you get this identity, yeah. So, so what we get is g dot uh, uh, g dot uh, phi. Uh, so we get g dot phi. Uh, this is same as g dot phi. And then again, uh, we apply uh, apply h to. Uh, I mean, apply this formula again, and we get that this this is same at h dot g dot phi evaluated at v. Yeah? So, so we get that h g dot phi is same as h dot g dot phi. And hence, that proves that uh, this is indeed a uh, action. Yeah? So G acts on phi. Hence, it is an action of. Uh, uh, hence, it is an action of uh, G on on V dual. Yeah. So uh, and and uh, and uh, you also uh, one also has to check. So as I said, you have to check that this is linear. Yeah, which means. Uh, uh, this uh, this bijection actually lands in uh, GL of V star and it's not some arbitrary bijection. Yeah, so it it is a by G phi is again uh, so uh, so uh, this uh, um, so since it's a, it's an action, it's automatically a bijection on V star. You just have to check that uh, G. So what you have to, one has to check is that uh, maybe I should uh, so. So maybe I'll just write what one has to check to ensure this. Yeah, g dot phi one plus phi two is uh, and g dot phi one plus g dot phi two. So that uh, it follows. You just have to apply this formula and g dot uh, 
alpha phi one. Well, phi one, phi two are in V star. Even if you got even if you two are in in V star and uh, alpha is in K, yeah. So then you have to check that this is uh, um, alpha times G dot V one. Okay, so if you check these two, that will tell you that uh, this uh, this is an uh, uh, this is uh, this is a representation, and uh, that representation uh, the map from uh, we will denote it by rho sub v star. Yeah, so I'm using rho sub v star is the map from G to G L V star. So the image lies in this thing. Okay. So we can also tell you what the uh, what the meet. So if we if we know the matrix of uh, uh, rho g with respect to some basis, then we can uh, so we can give a description of uh, matrix with respect to dual basis. Yeah. But uh, before that, let me just give you an alternate way of thinking about uh, thinking about this dual representation. Yeah? So uh, so see uh, we have this map. Uh, so, so we want to know what is, so I, uh, one way was this pairing should be preserved. The other way to think about it is that there is a map from V to V. Yeah, uh, this G action gives you a map from V to V. And then there is a, uh, the, we are given this phi. Yeah? So we want G phi to be such a map from V to K such that this diagram permutes. Okay, where this map from K to K is the identity map. Yeah? So, because because there is no action of uh, G on K, it's the trivial action. Yeah. So, so this map is identity. To so to make uh, make this diagram commute is same as saying that G phi. Uh, so uh, so first we apply uh, G to V. So if you take an element V in V and apply G uh, to it, we get G, G dot V. And then if we apply G phi to it, that should be same as first we apply phi to V. So we go from this to this and then come here. So phi to V and uh, this come down is the identity thing. So there's nothing we are doing. Yeah? So this identity should hold, yeah? which is same as uh, same as this identity. Yeah? That is what uh, we have defined our dual represent. So that's another way of thinking about the dual represent. In fact, uh, what we can do is we, uh, we can, instead of saying home V and K, uh, so this is this you can think of it as a special case of uh, a more general phenomenon. So if you have a representation V and W, two two representations of of the group G, then you can look at uh, the set of all k linear maps from uh, V to W. Yeah. So this uh, this guy is set of all k linear maps from V to W. V to W. Um, so v um, to W. Yeah. So what is the dimension of this guy? So if V is n dimensional and W is m dimensional, uh, what will be the dimension of a uh, set of all linear mass from V to W? What is the dimension of V star? If V is n-dimensional, then V star is also n-dimensional, right? So I hope you have seen this, these things. So V star is n-dimensional. Similarly, uh, so here, uh, the dimension of home VW is just dimension of V times dimension of W, okay? So, uh, so you get, uh, so basically you choose a basis of uh, V and uh, choose a, a basis of W. And if you assign, so giving a linear map from V to W is just, uh, you know, uh, uh, assigning where the, the basis elements should go. And uh, you assign it uh, randomly, uh, 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 these basis elements of W, then they will all be linearly independent maps. So that's, uh, um, so that uh, um, so so there, there, there is a natural way of uh, giving a basis to it, yeah. 
So, so I hope you have uh, you have seen this uh, home. And uh, so, in fact, uh, we will show uh, that home. We uh, so maybe in the home home in the uh, in the uh, afternoon session, we will show that this is same as we we dual uh, tensor W. Yeah. And, uh, and this is isomorphic to the dual tensor W and hence uh, for tensor product, we know that dimension multiplies. So, so it will be clear that this dimension is uh, dimension of V times dimension W. Okay. So, uh, so let's see. Uh, so, so we have this picture, yeah? So we have this V uh, to V. We have uh, a map W. Uh, 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 a map to W phi, and um, there is an action of G on V. There is a, also an action of G on W. Yeah, and we want to know what is G G phi. Yeah, so so we want this diagram to commute. Uh, so now remember the target is also a representation. So here in in the previous picture there was uh, the action was trivial. So this map was identical. But here now the action may not be trivial. So and then also we want to make home VW into a into a representation. Yeah. So uh, so the action is given by this uh, uh, in, uh, insisting that this commit this diagram commute. So this diagram commute. So that is to say that if we take a vector a small v in v, so small v in v, and uh, then first apply g. Uh, to land again in V and then apply this uh, linear map G phi uh, to land in W. That should be same as first applying phi to V to land in W and then uh, acting by G on W. Yeah? So, so this action is on V. The first action is on V and the second on the right hand side, the action is on W. Okay. So, uh, so what we get is that, uh, uh, the, uh, so again, if you replace uh, G dot V by uh, V by G inverse V in this expression, then you'll get that uh, G dot phi of V should be G dot phi of G inverse V. Yeah? So this is the formula. So, so G, uh, G phi should be this, uh, this linear map. G phi of V should be uh, G dot phi of G inverse V. So this, this remember is an action of on W uh, and this is on V. Yeah. So if you, if I want to write it very transparently, uh, I should use uh, this row. Yeah. So a row row of so the action of uh, uh, of G on uh, on home. Yeah. So row home uh, V W is what I should write. So row home V W G on phi should be uh, should be a linear map. Uh, uh, should be another linear map from V to W, and uh, its formula is given by if you put plug in V. That should be rho w of g. So remember, the first action is by um, is the action of w. Yeah. So from the context, it's usually clear wh what you have to do. So rho w of g of phi of rho v of uh, g inverse evaluated at me. Okay. So uh, so this uh, so this makes this makes home v w into a G representation, into G representation. So again, uh, you have to check that, uh, you know, uh, uh, this uh, uh, home, uh, row, row sub home is a, is a group homomorphism from, so you have to check that row, uh, this formula is okay, yeah. So, Say that uh, again. Sir, excuse me, I was disconnected for a moment. Uh, I was disconnected for a moment. This time, again, the last question. Um, one, uh, your voice is breaking. It might be that my internet is bad, but uh, somehow I can't hear you. Can you, can you repeat the sir, question? Sir, I got disconnected for a while. Can uh -huh. you please explain the last line, uh, row PWG, this last line explanation once again? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, so, uh, so this is how it goes, yeah? So uh, this row, uh, so G dot phi we are trying to define, yeah? So G dot phi is, a, is another linear map. So I'm just trying to write it in terms of this uh, uh, 
uh, rho. So rho, remember, is a is a map from G to. Uh, so we want to define this rho home, V W. Yeah. So it should be a map from G to G L of uh, home, V W. Yeah. So we are, we are trying to give a representation of uh, G on this home V W. So, so that means rho G of uh, 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 rho home, rho sub home of G evaluated at phi should be another linear map. Yeah. So that linear map, I'm just copying the above line in in the new notation. So the linear map is uh, you look at the action of uh, G on this um, uh, on uh, on V first. So uh, G inverse on V first. So we get rho V G inverse of V. Uh, apply phi to it, so you land in W, and then you act uh, act via G on 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 that element of W. So you get rho G of a uh, rho, rho sub W of G here. Yeah, does it make sense now? Okay. Yes, sir. It's okay. Okay, good. So so this makes V into a G representation. So so uh, I I've given you the formula. So you you one still has to check that. Uh, that uh, there's too much noise. Okay, so uh, um, so you still have to check that rho g of uh, phi is indeed a, uh, indeed a, a map from v to w is a linear map from v to w, and you also have to check. So that that is sort of straightforward, but you also have, I mean, all the verifications are not too difficult. And then you have to check that rho g is a is a bijection from uh, um, home v is a is a is a bijection from uh, home v w to home v w. And that uh, that again follows if you so basically what you do is you look at uh, you compose it with rho g inverse and you will see that uh, the, it gives you identity. Okay, and uh, then finally you have to check that uh, rho g is linear. So if you take two phi one and phi two two linear maps, then uh, rho g of phi one plus phi two is same as rho g of phi one plus rho g of phi two, and it behaves well with scalar multiplication. So like, the way we did it in in the dual case, you have to do the same thing here. So this is more general. If you take W to be uh, your vector space uh, uh, K itself with uh, with the trivial action, that means uh, uh, and g dot v is equal to v for all g in g and all v in v. Then, uh, uh, then uh, uh, what you get is the uh, the dual representation. Okay. So, uh, so now let's let's try to understand uh, the matrix uh, matrix of the dual representation. If I can get this moving. Yeah. So. Yeah. So suppose uh, suppose we have a basis e1 to en of v, yeah. We so now our objective is to understand this uh, and this uh, this uh, this linear map, yeah. For each g, we we get a linear map of v dual, yeah. So we want to understand uh, on these linear maps. So now suppose we are given a basis of v, then we can find a dual basis of uh, uh, of v star, yeah, e1 to e star. So dual basis, uh, uh, by definition, uh, what it means is we choose those functions which uh, uh, which are like this. So e i star of e j is uh, delta i j. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, so maybe I should. Uh, so I don't know if you. So hopefully you know this notation, which is one if i equals j and uh, zero otherwise. So this is this is same as one i equals j or zero otherwise. Oh, yeah. I equals j zero otherwise. Okay. So uh, so e i stars are e one star to e n. So once you did uh, say what happens on the basis element uh, that determines the linear map. Yeah. So so these are uh, uh, these are the dual basis elements of e star, and uh, 
um, uh, so we will we will uh, so say rho v of g is uh, some matrix a with respect to this basis e1 to en then uh, uh, then maybe I'll, I'll skip over the computation yeah so this maybe can be done in uh, in uh, in the second half then uh, i'll just tell you what the answer is then uh, rho v star of g with respect to the dual basis uh, what you get is uh, is is this thing you you take a you take the transpose of it uh, you uh, you do the inverse of it and take the transpose yeah? so uh, so uh, you do rho v g inverse transpose this is what you'll get so I, i've written down this computation i'll say this notes yeah but uh, uh, but maybe it is um, uh, it will take too much time and i i uh, and uh, this is maybe not that instructive yeah so this is just uh, writing down so this is some basic linear algebra which you have seen out there okay so uh, so uh, so this is how the matrix of uh, uh, rho v star g looks like it is uh, uh, rho v g inverse transpose if you if you take the dual basis for the for v star okay so, so this will be the homework problem, which will be worked out. So first, you should show that this is this is isomorphic as a vector space, and then, in fact, uh, one can show that uh, this uh, the natural isomorphism is actually G equivariant. So they are isomorphic. Now. So if V and W are both G representation, then I have defined for you what is the what is this uh, uh, represent uh, what is this uh, action? Yeah. So, so one can uh, one can show that uh, with respect to this action, and there is a there is a G action on this guy which we saw last time, on this tensor product. So we uh, one can show that the natural isomorphism which uh, which is between these two guys is actually actually a G equivalent map. Okay. So, so that uh, that's uh, all I wanted to say about dual representation. So let's now. Is, are there any questions before I get into character theory? Okay. Okay. So let's let's get into character theory. Yeah. So we want to define an invariant of a representation, which is a uh, which as we will see later in uh, in this uh, uh, lecture, that is a very useful invariant. Yeah. So, and that invariant is called character. So let uh, rho be a representation. The character, uh, uh, the character uh, of rho, uh, which will be denoted by chi rho, is a function from G to complex numbers. So now our representations are complex representations. So I put a V sub C here. Yeah? So K is, K is C from here on. Okay. So Cairo is a function from G to C given by this formula. What do you do? Uh, uh, so if you are given an element G in G, you define Cairo of uh, G to be the trace of uh, this rho G. Yeah. So rho G, remember, is a, L, is a linear transformation of V. And uh, you can compute its trace. Yeah. Uh, so, t, uh, so maybe you fix a basis, you get a matrix, you look at a trace, and then we know that it does not depend upon the choice of the basis. Yeah? So, uh, so if you choose a different set of bases, you'll get the same trace. It doesn't matter. Okay. So that is uh, that is your uh, uh, and that this is the character. Yeah. So this is the formula for the character. So somehow the program freezes from time to time. And uh, that's when I don't know what to do. The software freezes, this one note. I, I restarted just before the session. So I heard, I'm hoping that this, won't, this would not lead to any problem. But uh, clearly it's not very reliable. Are you guys still connected with me? It's not an internet issue, I hope. 
Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so let me restart it. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah. So this is the formula for uh, for uh, um. And this is the formula for uh, um uh for the character. Yeah. Uh, it's just the trace. So, uh, so if if you are given a one-dimensional representation, then uh, you know the uh, the map goes uh, is a, uh, so the image is a one by one matrix, yeah. So that uh, meaning the map is just multiplication by some scalar. So, uh, so the character is same as the representation, yeah. So that's the first observation. If the representation is one-dimensional, then there is no difference between uh, the representation and its character. So in, in that sense, the character determines the representation itself. And later in the course, we will see that this is true for higher dimensional representation as well. So, um, and the, uh, if, uh, so we will see that if, if two representations have the same character, then the two representations are same. Yeah? They are isomorphic, if and only if uh, they have the same representation. OK. So. Uh, so it's a it's a really complete invariant, meaning uh, just by looking at the character, you can tell uh, uh, whether uh, you know, the two represent uh, whether the representations are same or not. So, but let's start with some basic properties of character. Yeah? So let chi be a character of a G representation V. Then uh, let's uh, let's see what happens. So, what is uh, so chi of the identity element? Uh, uh, which uh, one can denote by one or E sub G is same as the dimension of V. Chi of, uh, so these are uh, so this is straightforward, right? Uh, the identity element, the action of the identity element on V is it's an action, yeah. So the identity or it's a group homomorphism. So the identity element goes to the identity matrix, and the trace of the identity matrix uh, um, uh, 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 is same as the dimension of the vector space, yeah. So if it is if V is n-dimensional, then uh, is the is the trace of the identity transformation is uh, is just the dimension of the vector. So the one, first one is uh, straightforward. Uh, second is chi of G inverse is same as chi G bar. Yeah? So conjugate of G. So we'll see this. And second, uh, thirdly, chi is a class function. That means if you look at uh, chi of G inverse H G, that is same as chi of H. So if you look at the conjugacy class uh, in, in this group G, so, any, uh, so two elements are said to be conjugates if, uh, if uh, H and H prime, if uh, H prime is uh, G inverse HG of, uh, you know, for some G in G. Yeah? So two elements in the same conjugacy class will have the same, uh, same uh, character. This, uh, will, uh, the character will take the same value on those two elements. Yeah? This, that's what uh, number three says. Or in other words, chi, chi is a class function. That means it, it assigns one value to each class. Yeah? And uh, so every element in that class will have the same value. So it's constant on each classes. So, let, uh, so the first one is uh, straightforward, as I said. Uh, chi of one is uh, trace of the identity matrix, which is same as the dimension of the vector space. For the second one, uh, note that chi g inverse is trace of rho g inverse. And uh, what is rho g inverse? So if, uh, say, uh, uh, so rho g inverse is the inverse matrix of rho g, yeah? So, so say, uh, 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 say rho g has some eigenvalues lambda 1 to lambda n, then uh, so it, it can have, it will have exactly n eigenvalues. Uh, 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 up to repeat, so here they may not be distinct. So repetition, 
Yeah, so the trace is the sum of these eigenvalues. Yeah, then uh, rho g inverse is the inverse matrix. Yeah, so chi g, uh, so the inverse matrix will have uh, uh, eigenvalues lambda one inverse to lambda n inverse. Remember, rho g is a is a matrix which is. Uh, so we saw that uh, this rho g for n is identity. Yeah, for where g is uh, where n is the order of order of the group. So uh, uh, order of G, yeah, uh, or, 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 or order of the uh, group as well, then also is true. So that tells you that, uh, um, um, that uh, uh, rho G is a diagonalizable matrix, okay? And uh, if, you, if you do the inverse, then uh, uh, if you calculate the inverse, so if you want to calculate the trace of the inverse, then it's just, uh, uh, lambda one inverse uh, is uh, so you, the eigenvalues are inverses of the eigenvalues. So you get uh, uh, sum of lambda one inverse to lambda n inverse. Yeah, but uh, but uh, the uh, the minimal polynomial of so so maybe I don't want this to run. So, so remember rho g uh, is a matrix whose uh, if you take the uh, size of g power you get identity, yeah? So the characteristic polynomial or the, so uh, characteristic polynomial or the minimal polynomial uh, uh, of this uh, matrix is, uh, uh, so uh, divides, divides, so, so, so characteristic polynomial of rho g divides, uh, T power, uh, T power m minus i for um, T power m minus one for some m, m where m is maybe size of order of g or uh, in fact, you can replace it by, uh, um, or, uh, you can replace it by order of g, order of uh, little g in the group g. Yeah. So that tells you that uh, all, the, uh, all the eigenvalues are, are roots of unity. Yeah. So, uh, so this uh, this I had explained you earlier as well uh, for for, uh, for one-dimensional representation. But even if the representation is higher dimensional, what we see is that the eigenvalues of the of these uh, linear transformation are roots of unity. So, uh, so if, I think uh, uh, yes, yeah. I think you mean that uh, minimal polynomial, or is it direct? Even, even the characteristic, yeah. So the minimal polynomial and even the characteristic polynomial will uh, divide some uh, some uh, high enough powers. Yeah, but it's okay. Yeah. So the, the yeah. argument I give works for minimal polynomial. Yeah. So minimal polynomial divides t power m minus one. So that tells you that the roots of the so all these eigenvalues are uh, are um, uh, basically uh, roots of unity. So, uh, so it's inverse is basically, so if you have a root of unity, then it's uh, uh, something which lies on the unit circle, it's inverse is basically is conjugate. Yeah, so if Z lies on a unit circle, then Z inverse, uh, Z, Z bar is one. Yeah, that is what we know. So, uh, so in Z, so that tells you Z inverse is just Z bar, yeah. So, so you can replace lambda I inverse by lambda I bar. So what you get is chi of g inverse is same as chi, uh, uh, and then you can put bar outside. So that is just chi g bar. So that proves uh, number two. Okay. Now finally, to see number three, uh, this is just a formula for trace. Yeah. So so uh, what we have to do uh, left hand side chi of uh, g inverse h g is just trace of rho of g inverse h g. And we want to prove that that is same as trace of rho h, yeah. But trace of rho, uh, rho of uh, g inverse h g. Remember, rho is a group homomorphism, so it uh, you can write it as product of uh, these three uh, linear transformation. It's trace of rho g inverse, trace of rho h times trace of rho g. Yeah. So, and then you club it as you think of uh, this first mat matrix as A and the second matrix as B. So trace of AB is same as trace of BA, yeah? That, uh, that I, I guess we, we know from linear algebra, yeah? So that tells you that uh, uh, 
in this trace is same as trace of rho h, rho g, rho g inverse. But uh, rho g and rho g inverse again cancels out. Yeah, these two you can cancel out and you get that the same as uh, trace of rho. So that proves uh, that proves this uh, this item. Okay. Hello, sir. Yes. Sir, I have a question. Here in the mm -hmm. character theory, you have defined the uh, function from G to C. Yeah. Where the field is complex field. Yeah. So can we, yeah. can we define can we define the same way if we take for R, that is if the field is R? You can define it. Defining is not a problem or any field, but uh, it may not have all the properties. So for instance, there is no conjugate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Yes, so right. some some of the properties. So the, as long as the definition goes, you can define it, but it may not have all the properties we want. Okay. 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 Thank some you. of the properties will be okay. For instance, chi of one will be a dimension of v. This will not hold, and again, class function will hold. Yeah, that doesn't require complex numbers. <laughs> Any, any other questions or comments? So that's, uh, uh, that's some basic properties of, of the character. Now, uh, say uh, we want to also, uh, so we have done, uh, so if you are given some representation, we could cook up some other representation, like V and W are two G representation. Then V plus W, as we know, is another G representation. And uh, we can ask what is the character of V plus W? It happens to be, same as character of V plus character of W. So this is a function. Uh, this is a function from G to C. This is a function of G, G to C. You can add them. Yeah. So this is what uh, what you get uh, if you look at the character of V plus W. It just adds. Similarly, if you take the tensor product, the character of V tensor W is same as character of V times character of W. Okay. So. Uh, uh, so I hope uh, this function makes sense, yeah? So maybe, maybe I'll, I'll just uh, write a little bit here. So, chi V plus chi W of evaluated at uh, G, this sum means uh, you just take chi V G plus chi, chi W G. Yes, this this is a this is a function from G to complex numbers, and similarly this thing, phi v phi w of evaluated at uh, G is just phi v G times chi w G. That is what uh, this function, this product means. Okay, and we'll see more things, but let's just uh, prove these statements. So remember, uh, what is the uh, so uh, we we saw what is the matrix of uh, uh, v plus w uh, uh, row of uh, row of g with respect to v plus w in terms of uh, this it's a block diagonal matrix yeah so you put uh, row v g here and row v uh, row w g here and zeros here this is how the the matrix looks like yeah? of uh, of g uh, of, of the action of g on v plus w or, uh, uh, the, uh, so so, so the trace of uh, tr the, the trace of this matrix is going to be same as trace of this plus trace of this. Yeah? So it just follows from from this side. Uh, just uh, recollecting how the action how uh, v plus w is given the representation, and the same thing works for tensor product. So remember, rho v tensor w of G uh, is uh, uh, trace of this is. Uh, so if rho vg is this matrix, uh, which we denoted by some, uh, so is this some matrix, then we define this tensor product of two matrices, where the notation, yeah? So it was, uh, remember it was A11, B, A12, B, and so on, A. So it was this big block diagonal, uh, the, the big uh, block matrices, yeah? <laughs> So if you then if you think about what the trace of this is, so maybe I'll just write that uh, write that matrix down. So that uh, so it was a a one one b a one two b and so on a two one b a two two 
B and so on. But what matters is uh, the diagonal, uh, the block diagonal entries because we, we care about the trace only, yeah, not the other part. So this is how the matrix looks like. If, uh, if the first one is A and the second one is B, this is how the matrix looks like. And if you want to compute the trace of this, that's A11 times trace of B plus A22 times trace of B plus A33 times trace of B and so on. Yeah. So, uh, so if you add them together, you get uh, trace of A times trace of B. Yeah? So you get this formula. So that tells you that, uh, and that gives you this formula B, that character of uh, V tensor W is same as character V times character of W. Is that okay? So, so these two just follow from the two formulas which we saw. And similarly, the dual. So I, I told you what the formula is uh, uh, with respect to some dual basis. So again, we can apply the same formula. Yeah. So chi, chi, chi of V dual is same as chi of V bar. Yeah. And why is that? So remember chi of V dual uh, of G is just a trace of rho V dual of G. And rho, rho V dual of G, we rem, uh, remember with respect to dual matrix is uh, a dual basis. The matrix is rho V G inverse and transpose. So there is transpose as well, but trace of uh, the matrix and this transpose are same. So I can forget about the transpose. And, uh, and rho VG inverse uh, uh, trace we already computed in, in the last uh, thing, uh, it comes out to be rho VG bar, yeah. summation uh, lambda I inverse, the lambda I are eigenvalues of rho VG and since uh, each lambda I has uh, size uh, modulus one, uh, you inverse can be replaced by bar. Okay, so, so we get that uh, uh, this is uh, chi VG. So chi VG is the sum of the eigenvalues. Yeah? So we get that uh, uh, the, uh, chi V star G is same as chi VG bar. Okay, and then uh, this, uh, uh, we can use uh, this C and, uh, and uh, and so remember, uh, so I also told you that uh, this, this is a homework problem, home VW is same as V star w, uh, tensor W, yeah, V dual tensor W. So if you assume this uh, homework, then chi of uh, home VW is just chi of V star tensor W, and chi of V star tensor W is just chi of V, uh, uh, chi of V, so maybe one can write one more step here. So, so it's chi of uh, V star times chi of W and uh, chi of V star we just saw is just chi of V, uh, v bar times chi W. Yeah. So, so, that, so that is the formula, okay? So home of VW, uh, uh, chi of home of VW is chi, chi bar of V times chi of W, okay? Maybe I should write this neatly. Chi of V bar dot chi of W. Okay, so that is the character of home. And then uh, this is just uh, another. So T and V, ah, this I didn't define in this one. So T and V is uh, uh, by definition is you take V tensor V tensor V and times. Yeah. Tensor product and times. Then, uh, uh, then you will get, uh, so you, it's just a multiplying chi V and times, which is same as uh, chi V power N. Okay. So that is what, uh, So this is how some of the basic formula for characters look like. Okay. With, uh, so we have done various operations uh, with representation and uh, these are some, uh, some basic formulas uh, for, the, for the character. Okay. So direct sum it's add, it adds, uh, for tensor product it multiplies, for dual you just have to take conjugate and uh, uh, for home uh, it's the, uh, you just combine tensor product and, and dual. Yeah. 
So let's do some computation. So maybe, so for one dimensional representation, there is nothing to compute, just the representation itself is the character. But maybe we do the computation for a regular representation because this will be useful as well, yeah? Uh, to, to compute the character of a regular representation. So G is a finite group uh, and V is, uh, v is the regular representation. And then chi V of one is, is uh, uh, that we know what it is going to be, it's same as the dimension of V. And the uh, dimension of V is same as uh, uh, order of G here, yeah? Right, guys? So maybe I should have paused a little bit for, for questions. So do you have any questions or comments before I continue this uh, computation of character of the regular representation? Any, any clarity questions or anything? No? Okay. Okay, so uh, so for one, we know it's going to be the dimension of the vector space, and in this case, it is uh, dimension is same as the size of the group G. Yeah, so chi v of one is G. Now we want to understand what happens when when G is not identity. G is uh, G is a non-identity element of the group. So so we know how the representation looks like. Yeah. So uh, so remember, if you recall. Um, if you recall, um, this uh, uh, G acts, uh, 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 so the way uh, this was defined, regular representation was G acts on G and it was the permutation uh, with uh, via left multiplication C and it was the permutation representation. So if G acts on G, then uh, uh, the basically uh, this action leads to a, uh, uh, leads to a bij. Uh, I mean, uh, in this uh, G gives a bijection, uh, induces a bijection on on G. Yeah, this left action gives a bijection on G, which is uh, which is H goes to G times H. Yeah. So if you take uh, the action is uh, G on, uh, action of G on G, uh, G is it sends H to G times H. Yeah. So you consider this. Uh, you call this map sigma sub G. Yeah. So so. Uh, so uh, and uh, and uh, we know what uh, what is the matrix of uh, so you, if you if you like uh, this regular representation uh, let's call it rho yeah so we know what the uh, what the matrix of rho g is with respect to the standard basis yeah uh, which are elements of this group is is the permutation matrix yeah so so uh, so we want to know what are the uh, what what so the the trace of a permutation matrix will be in the elements in uh, which are in the diagonal yeah so we want to compute what are the elements in the diagonal of this permutation matrix so that is same as asking when uh, when this uh, sigma g of h is same as h yeah when does uh, sigma g of h remains h so that will so that is same as asking g when is g h equal to h so that happens only when g is identity never uh, uh, never uh, otherwise it never happens yeah so so if we are assuming g is not identity then what we can con conclude is that sigma g of h is never equal to h yeah so that tells us that uh, if we consider the matrix uh, uh, rho v of g with respect to this uh, this standard basis of uh, uh, of this group ring kg of this representation regular representation then this is a, a permutation with matrix with uh, no entries in the diagonal being one yeah all the all the diagonal entries are zero so that uh, and uh, hence the trace must be zero so, so we see that uh, chi, uh, the uh, chi of the regular representation uh, at G is zero for, for G not equal to identity. Okay. So, so, uh, so this, is, uh, this is nice, yeah? So for regular representation, the character is very straightforward. On identity element, it takes the value of the, uh, uh, it takes the value as size of the group. And for all other elements of the group, it takes the value zero, okay? Does this make sense, guys? Yeah. Any questions? 
can you repeat this argument for this part um which argument no no that for g is not equal to 1 yeah so when g is not equal to 1 this uh, this rho v g is a permutation matrix yeah uh, i mean uh, it is always a permutation matrix but you want to uh, so if it's a permutation matrix uh, so it will it will give uh, it will send something to the uh, uh, so uh, uh, and remember the permutation matrix is matrix which has uh, ones and zeros and one is in only those positions uh, so, so one, one, each each row and each column is exactly one one yeah yes and uh, it will be one uh, and it will have an entry in the diagonal only if uh, if this per permutation fix that diagonal uh, fix that entry so the i i th entry will be one if uh, if this permutation fixes uh, the ith element yeah okay um, but uh, but this action doesn't fix anything. If G is non-identity, then G H is never equal to H. Yeah. So it doesn't fix yeah. any group element. So that tells you that all the diagonal entries are zero. Okay. Okay. Sir, so what that, about rho v e? Say that again. What about rho v e? Yeah, rho v e and is the identity. Is identity. Yeah, in that so when G is identity, rho V E is the identity matrix. Yeah. So that we have already computed. Then it's the identity matrix. So the trace is the dimension of the vector space. Yeah, which is same as uh, size of G. So yes. that is that is true for every representation. So this formula we saw uh, we saw a little while ago. Yeah, so this is true for every representation. Chi of the identity matrix is just the dimension of the vector space. Okay. Is that is that clear now? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Good. Now let, let's move on to uh, so so this idea can actually be generalized yeah so if you if you have a uh, so this you can work over for any permutation uh, representation so all we used is the fact that this is a permutation representation so suppose uh, x is a g set so that means uh, g x on a set x and uh, so we we can we can get an associated uh, permutation representation on on the vector space uh, whose basis is uh, is x then uh, um, and the character of uh, of uh, and, and of uh, this vx evaluated at g is the number of fixed points of sigma g so remember sigma g is a uh, is, so if you take an element of g it gives you a bijection on x yeah x going to g dot x so sig call sigma g that map so you just calculate the number of fixed points of this sigma g. So you calculate x such a uh, number of points, uh, x in uh, little x in capital X such that x, uh, g dot uh, g dot x is equal to x. Yeah. So so if you ca calculate the fixed points of uh, this sigma g, uh, the number of fixed points is the value of this uh, uh, character at that g. Yeah. So in the for the permutation made um, uh, representation, chi, uh, chi v, uh, chi, uh, this characters are all integers and are given by these numbers. So it's very nice, uh, nice function. In general, the character may not be a may not be a, a integer. Yeah, it may be. So it may uh, it may be something uh, something uh, different. It may be a, a, some different complex numbers. In fact, if uh, if it is a one-dimensional representation, then we know that it can be a, a nth root of unity and so on. But it can be an arbitrary co a complex number, a character, a, 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 this character function at a at a group element. But for for permutation uh, representation, it happens to be integers. Okay. So, uh, in, any questions? Okay. So, next thing uh, is uh, uh, this same two. Yeah. So, I haven't really defined this, and uh, yeah. So, maybe maybe I'll I'll define this a little bit. 
uh, because uh, maybe it's a good idea to do some computations as well. Okay. So here, so let V be a vector space uh, generated by E1 to EN. So I don't didn't mean V be. Uh, so let E1 to EN be a basis of V. Yeah, basis of V. Yeah. Then, uh, then uh, um, so first maybe I'll say what C, so T2V is just V. So uh, remember T2V is just V tensor V, yeah? Tensor product of V with it itself. Sim2V is sort of related to, uh, it's, all, it's, it's a quotient of uh, V. So, uh, you know, um, uh, v tensor V has a basis uh, e, e, EI tensor EJ, yeah? But e, e, EI tensor EJ is different from EJ tensor EI, yeah? So this, uh, so this particular element, um, um, so somehow this uh, thing is acting up. Uh, so EI tensor EJ, E1 tensor E2 is different, is not equal to E2 tensor E1. It's, it's a different element. Yeah, these are, these are uh, in fact, uh, these, these guys form a, uh, they are linearly independent. Yeah, so this, this form a basis. So sim 2 v is, uh, is a quotient. You, what you do is you quotient out by these, uh, these relation. Uh, so you want to make them same. Yeah, so the definition of sim 2 v um, so there is a general, I mean, you can define sim and v, but I don't want to do that uh, in that generality right now. But uh, sim to v is just uh, uh, v tensor v, and uh, you, you go mod uh, these relations. Yeah, so uh, v tensor w minus w tensor v for all V, W in, in capital V. So if you go mod uh, the subspace generated by these guys, these relations, then what you get is sim 2 V, yeah? So, so it's a quotient of T to V and, uh, and uh, the image of, e, uh, image of E1, uh, 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 e one tensor e two you denote it by e one dot e one e one ten the image of e one tensor e i tensor e j you denote it by e i dot e j in in sim two so t, it's a quotient of t two v yeah and they have elements like v tensor w yeah so the image of v tensor w you denote it by v dot v, uh, w so so those are the those are the kind of elements which uh, lie in sim two yeah. So, so what happens is sim two sim two v is also a sub uh, subspace of T two v. Uh, so, if uh, you know, there, there is a map uh, which uh, I've called it I one, you send uh, ei ei dot ej to to this particular element. Okay. So, uh, so these uh, so this and uh, you know what? So, what is the basis of sim two v? So, you can uh, the basis of sim two v is uh, ei dot ej uh, uh, i less equals j if you consider this set. So remember, uh, basis of T2V is ei tensor ej, I, ij can be any number between one and n. Here now, i must be less equals j and uh, both should be between one and n, yeah? So sim 2 v is uh, so of course the dimension of sim 2 v should be smaller than dimension of T two v. So so it, it's a smaller set. So this this happens to be a basis, and uh, if you send uh, this uh, um, uh, so so if you send e i dot e j to this uh, this particular element, then what you can uh, show is that it it is a subspace. Yeah. So this i one is a linear map. Uh, so, because you are sending basis to th this, and you you extend it linearly, and if you compose it with the quotient, what you'll get is that uh, you won't get identity, but you you'll get two times the identity. So, uh, so in some sense, so if you divide by half, then uh, then uh, this map sort of gives you a, a splitting of uh, of 
T2V2 map to SIM2V. Okay. And uh, similarly, exterior products. So these things maybe you have seen in, in the context of, uh, uh, I don't know, some different, uh, 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 some integration or something. <coughs> Hello, sir. Yes. Sir, the basis for SIM2V is EI dot or tensor? Uh, EI dot EJ. So, uh, so the image, uh, so uh, the so V tensor W bar, yeah, the image yeah. of uh, this is uh, this, uh, the notation for that is V dot W. Yeah, so V dot W is defined to be this, this bar. Okay. And condition on I and J is? I, I, I should be less equals J and uh, yeah, both should be between one and N. Thank you, sir. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately, this uh, writing has uh, somehow become worse. And it already started well, but uh, okay. So, so this is what uh, uh, sim two v uh, looks like, and similarly, x two v is uh, ei wedge ej. So here, what do you do? yeah. So this is called the alternating. Yes. Excuse me. Okay, so uh, alternate. Uh, this is X two V is called the alternating product, and uh, um, what it means is uh, so. Uh, this is again a quotient of T two V, but you go. Uh, so maybe I'll just write what is X two V. So this is T two V, but this time you go mod by the elements of the form V uh, V tensor V. Yeah, so a subspace generated by uh, V tensor V for V in V. Yeah, and uh, then what it what it enforces is that e EI wedge EJ is same as uh, negative of EJ uh, wedge EI. Yeah, so in symmetric EI dot EJ is same as uh, EJ dot EI, but in 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 the wedge is the is the is the negative of it. And again, if you do this map, then uh, you one can check that uh, uh, if you compose it with the with the quotient, it becomes uh, more or less uh, so, so some scalar times the identity. Okay. So uh, so sim two v and x two v can you can also think of it as sub the subspaces of uh, tensor uh, uh, this tens, uh, tensor product t two v and. Uh, yeah. So uh, yeah. So I've already written uh, E i dot e j is a basis of sim two v and e e i wedge e j uh, i less than j is a basis of x two v. Okay. So these are the, and these are the uh, and uh, if you if you um, and the intersection happens to be so if you look at uh, uh, if you look at the images of i one and i two you can show that the intersection happens to be. Uh, just the zero element, yeah. So they are uh, they are disjoint, uh, uh, linearly disjoint, and um, and uh, their direct sum is uh, so. If you so I one and I two are injective, so the, this you should uh, view it in that. Uh, so if you look at uh, this direct sum, then uh, it is isomorphic to T two. Okay. So uh, and uh, what uh, and uh, and these are the bases. Okay, and like uh, on on T two V, we have uh, if if V is a G representation, then T two V has a has a action of uh, 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 is also a, a V tensor V is a G representation. Similarly, sim two V and X two V is also a G representation, and the action is uh, given via via this thing. Yeah? So. Um, uh, so 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 basically what you can show is that uh, the subspace uh, this uh, this uh, this image of i1 is a sub representation of t2 and that is because you you see the image uh, Im uh, so i e, 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 e dot ej goes to ei tensor ej plus ej tensor ei so if you apply g to it you get uh, so, something like this but this is again uh, the image of um, so uh, and th this again lies in the image of I one, yeah. So um, 
uh, so it is uh, so there, there is a little bit of um, uh, checking to do but uh, one can check that this uh, this sim 2v and x 2v are g representation and this i1 and i2 are g equivalent maps thank you so uh, uh, and then one can uh, one can calculate the character of sim 2 and x 2v as well yeah so uh, um, uh, so yeah, uh, for that, uh, instead of taking some arbitrary basis of V, you you start with uh, with a basis consisting of eigenvectors. E one to E n be the basis consist consisting of eigenvectors with some eigenvalues lambda one to lambda n of rho g, and then uh, you can uh, you can uh, you can compute uh, uh, rho uh, rho sim two of V and rho x two of V. Okay, uh, or rather, uh, chi sim two of G and chi x two of G uh, by computing the trace with respect to these uh, these spaces. So, uh, uh, so what you get is that uh, so uh, so yeah. So I uh, I don't know. Yeah. So maybe. Uh, uh, yeah. So yeah. So. Yeah, so maybe uh, you you uh, th this is some so uh, this is some computation which you can you can you can verify yourself. Yeah, so g dot ei. Uh, uh, so if e one to en are eigenvectors, then g dot ei is going to be lambda uh, lambda i times ei, and g dot ej is going to be lambda uh, lambda j times ej. So and so what you get is lambda i times lambda j uh, will come out, and you'll get uh, this vector back. back. And from there, you can you can compute that uh, chi chi g of sim two v is some of these kinds, and from here you get uh, um, you get some expression. Yeah, so so the, the the explicit expression you can get. So so I'll not do the whole computation, but I'll just tell you that uh, chi of x two v turns out to be chi v of uh, chi uh, chi of x two v g turns out to be chi v of g whole square minus chi v of g square over two and chi of t2v is chi of sim 2v plus chi of x2v okay and uh, and uh, because because we know that the sum of these two character uh, representation is t2v yeah but also directly you can you can compute it okay and from there you can also get uh, character of sim 2v so, uh, so the character of sim square and xt uh, symmetric uh, square and xtj square also you can compute. In fact, you can compute for higher ones as well. But for that, uh, you should know the definition. So, if you know the definition, then uh, then it's not too bad. Okay. So, I, so this one, uh, I, so I mean, if if you are not familiar with sim two and x two, then maybe this uh, this fast forward way of things may not have helped you. But this is uh, just trying to tell you that you can you can actually compute characters of uh, these natural operations as well. Okay. So if you, if you didn't follow this, uh, it's okay. Uh, you can uh, you can. Uh, Look at it later in the notes, and uh, it will it will not uh, affect the rest of your uh, uh, rest of the lecture. Yeah, so I wasn't sure whether I should include it or not, but I thought maybe some computation I should show. So next thing uh, is uh, yes, sir. Uh, what is the uh, wedge product of two vectors? That v wedge w. How to compute wedge product of two vectors? Yeah, you so used you used e, e i uh, wedge e j right in the basis. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, what is the definition wise? How to compute? Uh, yeah. So, um, I mean, uh, if you are given uh, two uh, two vectors v and w, yeah. Uh, so v you can write it as summation e i e i. Maybe this is what you are asking. And uh, w summation a j. Uh, uh, bi sorry bi ei and then you want to know what is v wedge w yeah is that yes, what you are asking so yes, sir. yeah so you you do this formally yeah so you you do summation ai uh, ei which is summation uh, bi 
EI. Yes, sir. I understand that there would be EI wedge EJ uh, yeah. for the basis for all the basis. So, what is EI wedge EJ like? Uh, take yeah. two basis like that. Uh, so, so see uh, EI. So now you have to uh, uh, do uh, uh, use some relations. Yeah. So EI wedge EJ is same as so the basis of X two as I wrote it here. The, the basis of X2 is EI wedge EJ where I is less than J, yeah? So whenever you get uh, EI wedge EI, that is that term you can ignore, that is zero because you're modding out by uh, V tensor V, yeah? And whenever you have EI, EJ, EI wedge EJ where, uh, if you have EJ wedge EI where J is bigger than I, then uh, what you do is uh, you take, uh, uh, take the negative of, uh, you replace it by negative of EI wedge EJ. Okay. So you okay, will so be... after that, it's like a notational thing. Yeah, um, up to that, is, no... yeah, it's just a linear combination of these guys. Yeah, that is how you should think of it. Okay, sir. It's a vector space whose natural basis is this. Yeah, one, if, if, you, if you start with a basis, but it, it is... Uh, you can define it using some universal properties like tensor product and stuff, but um, uh, but uh, with uh, I mean that will require work. But uh, if you are given a basis, this is how it looks like. It's a it's a vector space with this this basis. Yeah. So this is the approach we took for tensor product as well. So uh, yeah, so you can look up, um, yeah, but there is a universal way of defining it. Uh, so in in my so as I said I taught this course and there I did it using universal properties so I maybe I'll share the video lectures of uh, of uh, so I, those lectures are on YouTube so I'll I'll share the link and those who are interested can can uh, go through those uh, uh, those lectures okay a any other questions or comments. And then uh, these computation will make sense. Uh, uh, will uh, will will be easier to understand. Okay, so let's uh, let's guess, uh, get to the most important theorem of this um, uh, second lecture. It's called the Shoes Lemma. So the lemma and the proof is very uh, uh, is deceptively simple, but uh, the consequences are uh, are immense. Yeah. So this is the most important lemma in representation theory, in the first course in representation theory. Yeah. So what does the lemma say? So it says that if V and W are two irreducible G representation, and F is some G equivariant map from V to W. So it's map of representations in some sense. Yeah. So F is a G equivalent map, then F is either zero or F is an isomorphism. Yeah? So there are no other possibilities. So if you think about in the setup of R modules or some vector space, there are many possibilities. Yeah? So here it says that uh, um, yeah, if, if it's a map of representation uh, between two irreducible guys, then it has to be either zero or an isomorphism. There are no two ways away. Moreover, if, uh, if W is same as V, and hence F is an endomorphism, then, uh, uh, then uh, F has to be a, sc uh, a, a, multi a mu multiplication, uh, is a sc scalar multiplication. Yeah? So it's, uh, it's a scalar multiple of identity. So it sends V to uh, some lambda times V uh, for a given fixed lambda. Yeah? So it is, it is just a scalar times identity. So that's the content of Schur's lemma. Okay, so does the statement make sense? So if you have two irreducible representations, irreducible is very important, two irreducible G representation, V and W, and if you have a G equivalent map, it has to be either zero or it's a, it's a scalar multiple. Okay. Of, it's, or it's an isomorphism, and uh, and uh, if you if you identify W with uh, V, then it's a scalar multiple of identity. Okay, so let's see a proof. Yeah. So uh, so let's say uh, so F is G equivalent map. Let's declare V zero to be the kernel of F. Yeah. So let V zero be the kernel of F. 
So the first observation is that uh, V0 is a sub-representation of it. See, the point is V is a G representation. So as soon as a G equivalent map, so as soon as you have a G equivalent map, both the kernel and the co-kernel and the image, everything is a is a is a G G representation. Yeah. So so, but let's just check why why it is a G representation. Uh, why is it a sub-representation of it? So let's take V in V0. Yeah. So what do we have to check? We have to check that G dot V is again in V0. Yeah. And so and let G in G, then F of G dot V is same as G dot F V because uh, because F is G equivalent. Yeah. So, uh, but f of v is zero because uh, v, uh, uh, little v is v naught is the kernel of f, yeah, and little v is in the in the kernel. So f of v is zero. So and uh, g, and of course uh, g sends zero to zero. So we we get that f of g of v is zero. So that tells you that g dot v is also in v zero. Yeah, g dot v is also in kernel of uh, of f. So that proves that v zero is a sub representation. Yeah. So this kernel of F is, which is sits in V is is a sub representation, but V was irreducible. Yeah. So since V is irreducible, there are only two possibilities for V zero. V zero is either zero, or V zero is the whole of V. Yeah. So V V and W are two non irreducible representations. So now if V V G, so if V G, V zero is whole of V. That means uh, f is a uh, kernel of f is whole of uh, 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 whole of uh, v. That means f must be the zero map. Yeah. So if v zero is whole of v, then uh, then f is zero. Yeah. And if uh, v zero is not uh, whole of as uh, whole of v, that means v zero is zero. Then uh, then what does it say? Then it says that f is injective. Yeah. So there are two cases. In first case, in one case, uh, uh, f is the zero map, and in the other case, uh, f is injective. Yeah. So we wanted to show that f is either zero or f is isomorphism. So we have to show that when f is injective, it must be it must also be surjective. So so far we have only used that v is irreducible. Now is the time to use w is irreducible. Yeah. So f is injective. And uh, what is the image? Image is some sub a subset of W. Yeah? Image image of F is F V is a is a subset a subspace of W. And since F is G equivalent, the subspace is also a sub representation. Yeah. <coughs> so maybe uh, one can one can verify this. So so say. Uh, G, uh, G, so say something is in uh, is an image of V, yeah. So, so G dot F V, yeah. So we want to say that this is again in the, but uh, G, uh, is in the image of V. But G dot F V we know is same as F of G dot V, yeah, because F is G equivalent, which belongs to F of V. Yeah? So that tells you that. Uh, if you start with something in the image of V, you land in the uh, and apply G to it, you land in the image of V. So that tells you that the image of V is uh, ima image of image of F. Sorry, not image of V. Image of F. Yeah, so if you start with something in the image of uh, F, you will still land in the image of F. So that tells you that the image of F is is a sub representation of W. But since W is irreducible. And uh, and the and f is injective, so image of uh, so f b is a non non trivial uh, uh, subspace, non zero subspace. It must be whole of W. Yeah? So that tells you that image of f is whole of W, and uh, uh, hence f is not just injective; it's surjective as well. So so f is an isomorphism. Okay. So so that proves the uh, the first case. Which is if if f is a g equivalent map between two irreducible representation, then it must be either zero or an isomorphism. Now you uh, you consider the second case. So suppose w is equal to v, then we want to show that it is a scalar. Yeah. So now assume w is equal to, uh, v is equal to w uh, or w is equal to v. So f is an endomorphism. Yeah. So as soon as you have an endomorphism, you can talk about. Uh, so it's it's a 
uh, is a square matrix with respect to some basis. So you can talk about an eigenvalue. <laughs> so as soon as you have an endomorphism, you have an eigenvalue. So let's call lambda to be a, to be one of the eigenvalues of f. Yeah. <coughs> Then what happens to f minus lambda i, uh, lambda times identity? It's a map from v to v. So f is g equivariant. Identity is g equivariant. Yeah, identity does nothing. Yeah, so it is a <coughs> and uh, lambda is just a scalar. So that is also a g equivariant map. So the difference is a g equivariant map. F times lambda i, uh, lambda times identity is a g equivariant map from V to V and V is irreducible. Yeah. So for from the previous part, we know that this map should either be zero or or an isomorphism. <coughs> but this map cannot be an isomorphism, F minus lambda identity. Why can't it be an isomorphism? Not injective. Yeah, so if you take the eigenvector of with respect to this lambda of this f, that goes to zero. Yeah, so it has a kernel, non-trivial kernel, which is generated by um, so one of the vector is the eigen eigenvector corresponding to lambda. So, uh, so in fact, uh, the whole eigenspace is uh, eigenspace corresponding to lambda is in the kernel. Yeah, so uh, so so this is not. Uh, uh, it's not an isomorphism, so this must be the zero map f minus lambda identity. So it, it's a zero map tells you that f must be lambda times identity. So as you can see, the proof is very straightforward. I mean, we just use the uh, uh, use the irreducibility of V and W, and uh, we got this uh, and this thing. Yeah, this uh, uh, some abstraction is uh, some small abstraction gives you this proof uh, very in a very straightforward way. Okay. So that is our shoes lemma. So so as I said, it's an important lemma. So just uh, just ponder over it. Just think about it a little longer. Okay. So any map between two irreducible representations, uh, equivalent map must be either zero or, or uh, uh, or an isomorphism. And if it is an endomorphism, then it must be a scalar times identity, where that scalar may be zero, or it, it could be non zero, so any, num any complex numbers. Okay, so let's see some consequence. So today we want to, uh, I wanted to do some consequence of Shu's lemma. And, uh, and uh, so, so some consequence uh, which will uh, which will imply something about the characters of the representation. Okay, so something called the orthogonality of uh, irreducible characters. Okay, but we, before that, uh, maybe we can we can do this uh, this corollary. So actually, one uh, one proof of that orthogonality of uh, character, which we'll see later on, is via this corollary as well. But I'll uh, but this uh, that proof is a bit computational. So maybe I'll, I'll put it up on, on the Dropbox, but it's using matrices. So might, uh, some of you may, may like it. So I may put it in the Dropbox and you can look at it, but I won't present that uh, proof using this. But the statement itself is quite nice. So I thought I'll, I'll just keep this statement. Yeah. So suppose V1 and V2 are two irreducible G representation and H is any linear map between V1 and V2. So it may not be equivalent. Yeah. Then you cook up this new linear map, H0, by this averaging te technique. Yeah? So what you do, you look at one over size of G, sum over um, rho V2 G inverse, composed H, composed rho, uh, rho V1 G in, in G, okay? So, the, so remember this rho V1 G is an endomorphism of V. So it takes V1 to V1, then H will take it to V2, and then this row V2, G will take it back to V2. Yeah, so this uh, this composition of three maps is a map from V1 to V2. And it's a, it's a, it's a composition of three linear maps, so it, this is again a linear map. Sum of linear map is a linear map, and then you are dividing by 
the order of g so it's uh, which is just the number so it stays a linear map you know so h naught is indeed a linear map and uh, what you can say about h naught so if v1 and v2 are not isomorphic then you can say that h naught must be zero and if v1 is equal to v2 uh, then what you can show is that uh, uh, so v1 is equal to v2 and and the representations are also same so rho v1 is same as rho v2 then what you can say is that h naught is uh, is uh, this times identity so a scalar times uh, some scalar times identity and that scalar is 1 over n times trace of h where n is the dimension of this vector space v dimension of v1 which is same as dimension of v Okay. So this is uh, so uh, so this corollary actually follows directly from Schuh's lemma. So what one does is uh, ch check that g uh, h naught is g equivariant. Yeah. So h naught you have to check is g equivariant now. So what is h naught? What you are doing is uh, so to check h naught is g equivariant. What do we have to check? We will have to check that h naught composed. So, uh, 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 I mean, by definition, is h not g dot b should be g dot h not b. Yeah. So, if if I want to write it in terms of this row, what it means is that h not composed v one uh, row v one of g prime uh, is, should be row v two of g prime compose h not for all g prime in g. So instead of g, I, what I'm doing is putting in g prime because. G comes in this formula, so I want a different symbol. Yeah. Sir, this is just to inform that time is over. Say that again. Time is over. Oh, time is over. Ah, ah I see, I see. Okay. Um, okay, so maybe, um, yeah, so, so, uh, so I'll just wrap up with this proof by after ending the proof, yeah, and maybe the rest of the discussion can happen in the in the uh, so questions you can ask me in the afternoon yeah so so roughly the idea is that h naught is g equivariant uh, so so you can you can prove that h naught is g equivariant by uh, proving this identity yeah so you, one has to prove this identity yeah and uh, this identity will follow immediately if you use this formula you know h naught compose rho v1 g inverse if you put in so what you do is you pre-multiply by uh, rho v1 and g prime inverse times rho v1 uh, g prime, yeah? And uh, then you will see that uh, a change of variable will give you this, uh, 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 this uh, right-hand side, yeah? So you can prove uh, this identity, which will prove that h naught is g equivalent. And once you have that h naught is g equivalent, you apply Schuh's lemma. Uh, 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 so Schuh's lemma tells you that if v1 and v2 are not uh, uh, are not isomorphic, then then this g h naught and this h naught must be zero. So Schuh's lemma tells you that h naught must be zero or it must be an is isomorphism. So if v1 and v2 are not are different irreducible are not isomorphic, then of course h naught must be zero. And if they are isomorphic. The, and uh, v1 is equal to v2 and they are the same representation then you can you can compute <coughs> yeah and then what we know is that uh, so then then we know that uh, h not must be sc some scalar times uh, the identity guy yeah and we just have to determine that scalar so to determine that scalar we just compute the trace of h not in two different ways. So if you think of H naught as uh, lambda times identity of V1, then the trace of H naught should be lambda N. And the other is to use this formula for H naught, yeah, trace of this linear map. So the trace of H naught is trace of, uh, so trace of this uh, composition of three linear maps, you sum it over, over all G in G and then divide by size of G. But trace of this product uh, composition of these three linear map is just trace of H, yeah, because you do the same trick, yeah. You may move uh, row v1 g to the other side, and uh, so remember now v2 and v1 are same, yeah. So so the formula simplifies. 
So this is same as row uh, uh, trace of h, and uh, you uh, sum it g times and then divide by g, so you get this is trace of h. So, uh, so if you combine these two observations, what you get is lambda times n is same as trace of h. So lambda is trace of h times n. So h naught is just multiplication by trace of h over n times identity. Okay. So that proves the scholarly as well. Okay. So I guess uh, yeah. So in spite of skip, skipping a few things, I couldn't. Uh, state the orthogonality thing but uh, okay maybe we'll do that next time okay so so let me stop here and we will we will begin next time tomorrow the remaining part and i'll see you guys in the afternoon so maybe i can take one or two quick questions but other than that we will we'll have questions in the afternoon sir hello yes uh, sir, the averaging technique which you used today, yeah, uh, same formula was used uh, yesterday also while proving the mass case. Right? Yeah, the decomposition. So it wasn't yeah. the same formula exactly, but sort of similar formula. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean the formula was same. Uh, the thing is that uh, in one place you have a rho g which correspond to w and another correspond to v. Yeah, so there are two representations here. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, yes. the formula is exactly the same. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, similar ideas are there. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Girish. Yeah. 